Uh, hello and welcome uh, to our uh, Saturday evening uh, with the State of Affairs. Uh, I am Mahrajuddin, uh, the host uh, of this podcast. And today we have with us a very, very special guest. Uh, she's an author. Uh, she is a writer in the national and uh, state dailies and also with some journals. Uh, I reckon she has written two important novels uh, for which she has got this title that she's the only novelist who has written on the subject of uh, mental uh, anxieties and other stuff uh, associated with it. Uh, The first uh, novel she uh, has actually written is Tearful Pages back in 2016. And then uh, she has another now novel to her uh, credit, a Shattered Dreams on the mental health issue. And the first one is uh, on the gender violence. Uh, her name is Azra Mufti. Uh, she doesn't need any uh, introduction formal way. Uh, I have been waiting. It's a backlog session. Uh, since last year, I have been texting her that come to our podcast and bless us. Uh, with as much the beauty in her uh, writing as she can. So finally, uh, we were able to uh, bring her on uh, to join us this evening, uh, Saturday evening. Uh, Thank you for watching us. Uh, Thank you for uh, sending us your feedback. Uh, uh, Normally, we uh, do talk about a lot of stuff on women empowerment, but on the ground level, uh, there is much more to do. There is, isn't a glimmer of hope. It has not come to a threshold level or up to the mark yet. Uh, so we won't be able to dissect it, that it, it it's a clear, it's a society with clear mandate for women empowerment. First of all, I would like to welcome uh, Azra Mufti on this podcast. Azra, on the behalf of the State of Affairs, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for a warm welcome. Uh, my apologies. I could not uh, respond to the earlier invitations, but thankfully uh, uh, I am now able to connect with the, the audience. Thank you so much for giving me this platform to share my views and opinions on this podcast. And thanks for having me again. Uh- we will be talking about a lot of stuff uh, for the next half an hour or so. Uh, normally, we do no, we haven't as a society graduated uh, from that old patriarchal mindset that normally the society uh, you know faces or suffers from. Uh, you have written two important novels on the subject. Uh, will you tell us or share us share with us the thoughts that were behind this thing that how? you chose to write and how you chose to write on an important subject like uh, mental depression or uh, domestic violence. And uh, you came up with such brilliant two books, uh, Tearful Pages and Shattered Dreams. Uh, Tell us more about it. What brought you to writing? Yes. uh, So uh, earlier, uh, I'll start with the experiences. I used to write columns for the newspapers and I used to write because uh, it was a kind of therapy. I used to write for myself, but uh, as the time passed, I believe that uh, writing is no longer a fun activity that I do, uh, rather it's a duty because I got a lot of uh, appreciation. I got a lot, I got a lot of love from my audience. I consider it my duty to bring out the stories that the people want to hear. So it was totally an accident. I call myself an accidental writer because I never planned to be a writer. I was a reader though. I used to read a lot. I used to enjoy books. I used to gulp uh, huge uh, volumes of stories and articles and books. And that's how I thought of writing something of my own. So it was a, it was purely an accidental decision. Nothing was planned. So it just happened. And now uh, the thing is that I consider writing as a duty rather than a hobby. So that's how the journey has been so far. And, and, and what about this thing that you chose a subject that's uh, important? See, we can claim that we are a society with sort of liberalism. Obviously, we are liberals at the end of the day uh, in other matters. But when it boils down to one thing that women empowerment is still a facade or we can see it's still, uh, we though although we have taken some, some green shots of women empowerment institutionally uh, or, or at the social level, but still, it's not a norm. We have not been no, uh, able to normalize it, uh, given the reason that uh, we live in, 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 in a very... Uh, a tricky situation in a very, very uh, conservative society, 
through any standards. Uh, what made you to choose this subject? I mean, you could have chosen philosophy or you could have chosen some other thing, but why women empowerment? Exactly. Uh, when I thought of writing, I thought of writing something that I could easily connect to. Being a woman, I could, I was a very inquisitive person right from the beginning. So the thing that connected, that connected with me was how I wanted to portray, how I wanted to project the lives of women who have uh, impacted me in a way or so. So in uh, I could I could tell you that it was not a, a clear thought out process or it was a thing that I had given a lot of uh, thought to that I'll write something on this subject but but yes I thought that the, these are the kind of stories that people want to hear for example I wrote one of the articles where is my home so it was a story about a female uh, who uh, could not call her in-laws her home the place where she lived her home she could not call her in-laws where she uh, shifted after marrying her home so where is her home exactly so that was uh, the first story that hit me like where is my home so I started collecting material on what are the issues that women face what are the things that women who believe that they are empowered but in act in reality they are not the one who are empowered so these are the things that kind of uh, uh, in uh, kind of uh, compelled me to write something about women issues and uh, that was the first leap uh, towards women empowerment i could say uh, yeah that's, that's fair enough uh, i can actually gauge from this thing that uh, you have been uh, writing on the subject obviously it would have been a very uh, now at, at this stage of your life you must be looking back with sort of uh, pride and something with your uh, colors high for the reason that you have written and chosen a subject that's worth it uh, so what according to you in, in your writing uh, with the, uh, in, in your two novels or in your whole write-ups that you come you know come up with What's so basic to this woman empowerment? If you were to uh, uh, you were to just jot it down and zero it in and tell us what are the some important some important things to it. Uh, say for example, what are the basic things that actually is it an institutional thing? Is it a lack of education? Is it a lack of commitment from the side of the women themselves? Is it that we are fraught in we are just you know clubbed into something where there is no way out? Uh, so what are the things that are so basic to it? What I believe, uh, Mehrad Sahab, what I really feel that the foundation of all these crimes, the foundation of all these uh, things that give rise to women disempowerment is the mindset. So it all begins at the level where we are not ready to accept that women are an important part of society. I always say human rights above women rights. So when we first consider, when we make a mindset that yes, these are the people who we need to respect that woman is a person who should really be valued that is the day that these slogans will stop that is the day when women empowerment will begin in reality when we bring a change in our mindset for example when a girl gets married it's in her mindset that where I enter into a home, this is not my real home. Like, uh, mera sasural hai. I can never be a daughter. I will all, always be considered as a daughter-in-law. This is the mindset we uh, we have when we get married into a family. And same is the case with that family, that they will consider that she is a daughter-in-law. She is not a daughter. So all these things are so much rooted into our mindset that we disempower ourselves. I, I'm not saying that women disempower themselves, but this is the kind of mindset that we have set for the generations we have set eons ago. So when we actually uh, give way to our thoughts in a way that we present our ideas in a way that we value ourselves. Yes, she's a human being. She's not just a person. She's a human being. That is the day when we will really uh, empower a woman because uh, it all begins with the mindset you asked a question that what is the problem actually the problem is our mindset and until and unless we uh, accept our mindset like it should be that day uh, till that day empowerment will not set in as it should be but all 
Oleg Rossi, uh, at, a, at, at a certain stage of my career, I mean, when I was back in university, I used to think this way that uh, on this sort of egalitarian uh, basis that they need, I mean, the, uh, the women need actually sort of uh, empowerment because historically the, the injustice has been done to them. But down the line, it, even if it gets converted into something good, uh, still we are not able to, I mean, at least... Uh, being concise on this is that it converts into sort of elitism. Uh, people who get empowered, they just shun the responsibility that this is okay. I'm done with this. Now I have a different zone altogether of life. I'll be doing this and that. So what do you think on this? Uh, does it necessarily convert into an elitism like other forms in politics and in society and economics or some other fields of uh, as a profession? You tell us more about it. Is elitism an inevitable reality that we suffer uh, from or has the elitism uh, actually kept the whole uh, discourse on women empowerment hostage? Reasons being that at the sociological level, it's not possible for every female to be at a level where you are, say, for example, or people with some success stories are. Uh, what, do you, what do you make out of that? Yeah, most of the times we do consider it uh, like uh, elitism has uh, crept in like women who have some kind of backup or women who have some uh, uh, competitively better mindset who have who who are born and brought up in uh, in families who are educationally forward like they find it quite easy to just get the kind of uh, empowerment or get the kind of cooperation that is required but uh, ultimately what I believe is that um, it's just uh, we have to just together we need to build up the society right if I as a female I'll just struggle for my rights I will try to just do something but I will not get that kind of cooperation ultimately I'll be the one who'd be sitting uh, sitting in a cocoon I won't be able to come out of that cocoon so what I believe is that I have been fortunate enough because I was blessed with a family who was cooperative enough I was blessed with uh, an education that I could really uh, get the kind of uh, uh, get the kind of cooperation or get the kind of uh, boost that I needed in my life but most of the females unfortunately they are not able to get this kind of cooperation and they are left I, I believe that every woman is special or every child is special for that matter like we are uh, we are we are born in such a way that every one of us has something uh, something that we are capable of doing but I believe that uh, most men a time that women it's, it's the women folk who is not able to portray or project their capabilities or talent or caliber because there can be a lot of reasons that we will be talking about but i what i believe is this yes elitism can uh, ultimately there there is this uh, concept in our mind like the female who have who are the success stories or the females who make it um, make it uh, to the great um, achievements who have the great who contribute something to the uh, society they have they come from this elitist background but yes uh, once we give chance to other people who are no, like who really deserve to be encouraged who need our uh, blessings who need our cooperation i believe this that this this discourse will definitely come to uh, come to a, a, a point that where it should be don't feel this much of uh, you know optimism uh, with you on this. Uh, I mean, disagree slightly, but then uh, there is a pessimism. Uh, I mean, I am a pessimist by the very fact that uh, I haven't seen uh, any glimmer of hope. Uh, the way I have actually come across all the literature on this and all the success stories, the successful people, especially females. Uh, do you share the same pessimism? Are there is there an uh, olive branch we can say that we can subscribe to that? Okay, at the end of this tunnel, there will be a fine moment someday, and they will wake up with sort of an egalitarian society that, by any dictum or by any historical fact, cannot at least prove itself that you no know, society is egalitarian. So, do you share the pessimism, or are you are you an optimist by nature? That some yeah, of the things. Yeah, I, 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 I am a strong optimist. I believe that uh, there definitely has to be a, a glimmer of hope in every dark tunnel that we have. I believe that uh, with every challenge, uh, with every challenge. 
challenge that we come across there is definitely an achievement um there is one beautiful quote uh, if winter comes can spring be far behind so we definitely should share this kind of mindset because what i believe that uh, when i come across stories where small girls or females who used to write and now they are just trying to convert it into a full fledged career because they got some kind of inspiration for me so for me it's a kind of a optimism that i have been able to uh, motivate hundreds of girls out there like from shopian i get text i get messages from different parts of uh, kashmir that we want to write we have wrote this thing we want your support we uh, you gave us encouragement so it really feels good because that is the thing that has made me optimist like i was a pessimist but now uh, a situation has made me an optimist optimist so i believe that you also turn out to be optimist by the end of this podcast i hope <laughs> see see i i don't i, I don't believe in this thing there is a reason why uh, to your quote that uh, we must at least have this much this much of optimism that after every event there must be spring or summer that will follow but there are no visible gods in the society we are, we are structured socially at a different in a different uh, context altogether uh, because in nature uh, it just is on its own but society has its own problems you know that uh, and then give me some some substance so that i can back this thing that i have to be an optimist by the end of this podcast at least <laughs> uh so i will talk about myself like i was a kind of person who was very shy or introvert you could say who did not believe in my uh, who did not believe in my uh, uh, capabilities i used to think that i'll be a loser all the way i will not be able to do justice to my capabilities but with hard work or with smart work i could say uh, people faith, faith can move, can move mountains there uh, for you to be an optimist you need to believe in spirituality so we will not go into that what i believe is that hard work if you do a lot of um, if you put a lot of uh, honest hard work in any in in anything you do be it writing be it creative arts be it any field uh, you will definitely be not let down because i believe that hard work is key to success like it's easy to say hard work is key to success but this is the, something that i i really have faith in that i really believe that yes and there are a lot of stories if you want to back it with the back it up with research or anything there are a lot of success stories from rags to riches stories that you could consult and hopefully you'll be uh, you'll be uh, satisfied with those like internet is full of explosive content like that you you can read that anytime at least i'm inside uh, i have all my sympathies with the whole feminist discourse and especially with you because you have at least some tangible achievement to your credit at least i'll be sharing this sort of feminist quote unquote optimism with you for the moment at least for uh, uh for this conversation for the sake of this conversation uh, you have been i mean uh, uh, acting as a resource person for the national commission for women and you have also been kicking up the uh, so you know social uh, empowerment or women empowerment campaigns all across and then there is also one thing that you have been giving lectures uh, in colleges or maybe in universities uh, if 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 the if i trust the wikipedia so what what has been the experience so far uh the experience has been uh, uh like accelerating uh, i i come from a background where my parents you uh, they 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 used to like they were they were the educationist like we had this kind of uh, atmosphere in our family where uh, study reading education was given a lot of importance so um, yes i was associated with a certain legal awareness uh, programs like i uh, what i believe that writing is a very gradual process of bringing a change in society so i thought that it's time that you uh, start doing some kind of uh, intervention you start doing some kind of field work so i have been uh, a part of uh, various events various awareness programs workshops seminars where i used to interact with people not that i am a kind of a resource person i would like to just throw light on some important topic or i am an expert on anything not like that i 
like uh, just uh, uh, i uh, really uh, am a fan of um, apj abdul kalam so he used to have a kind of rapo with his students that they used to connect with him connect with him so i also had this thing in mind like when i go to a place or when i go for a lecture or when i go for a, any kind of event i connect with my audience and that is what i believe has been my greatest achievement like people connect to me and i connect to them so that was the reason and i have been associated with a lot of program uh, regarding uh, uh, domestic violence or it uh, related to drug abuse or uh, other uh, social issues that have crept in society so i really believe that i have this responsibility on my shoulders uh, like people have made me so i owe something to them and that's why i uh, just associate myself with any kind of uh, social work that i feel that um, i cannot do much yes but even if i try to uh, uh, inspire or my words try to mitigate the sufferings of one person i believe that my job is done there that's what i believe coming back to uh, you know at least you must be having some wonderful experiences it, it it's it's not less than a fun Uh, or at least entertaining. At least you get you you just click with your life. You know, kicking up the campaigns and meeting people. You know, cutting across all the stories that people have, uh, especially those who have been either bruised or brutalized or even oppressed by the you know, structure that we have at the social level. But coming back to this question of intermingling faith with this, you know, supporting your optimism by uh, by a pinch of faith, or at least. uh to become a, a a feminist or a or a person who can support women empowerment uh, what do you mean by that you know mixing up the faith with this thing see uh, i uh, um, often say in my uh, speech that uh, i uh, when i talk about feminism i do not talk about uh, uh, equality i just try to uh, like women and men they are not equal right they have been uh, they have been uh, programmed in such a way that uh, they are different right they are not equal they are different you are a man you have your own capabilities i am a woman i have my own capabilities but when we talk about feminism the only thing that i target is i target respect and i target uh, like you i my opinions and my views should be respected that for me is feminism like if you as mr mehraj you support my views you give me the power of uh, decision making that for me is that you are a feminist for feminism you don't have to just be a, um, a anti man or man hater uh, in reality that is not feminism so for um, equality i don't support equality men and women they are different altogether so yes uh, by bringing a tinge of uh, spirituality in it i believe that uh, <clears throat> this spirituality if you inculcate this habit of spirituality in you and if you are a person who believes in faith uh, this is what i believe that miracles do happen like miracles do happen because i was a kind of person who who had a lot of health issues who could not think that yes i can do this thing but yes with a tinge of faith with a tinge of spirituality i believe that what i am today is because of the faith and obviously uh, the super power that is handling all of us so that, that's what keeps me grounded Spiritu- yeah. spirituality keeps you grounded absolutely that's true i mean in, in my good old days when i was in naviat and i would equate spirituality with nusrat fateh ali khan alone and you know keeping all the other important people collateral uh, to this whole discourse but then yes uh, there are there is also one more thing that you put up a picture recently uh, where you have actually mentioned or tagged uh, gmc jammu with the, with the snowfall that was in the on the ground so is it like you were in jammu then or uh, is it like No, no. Does it, does it snow? Not GMC. Seriously? Not uh, Jammu. Uh, I uh, not GMC. It was IIM, Indian Institute of Management, Jammu. But they have their campus in Naugam. So oh. it's Indian Institute of Management off campus, Srinagar. <laughs> That's okay. the thing that has confused people. I am in Srinagar, but uh, I am on. I am working with the IIM Jammu, but the off campus is in Srinagar, and that explains the snow. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm. 
I was confused a bit then because the location was showing that it's in Jammu and you had actually right. kept that location Jammu. I mean, you have two books to your credit uh, as of now and third is in the pipeline. What's it all about? Can I get at least a clue about it? What's it yes, about? Uh, uh, yes, uh, I am actually, uh, I'm working on a novel, uh, but um, I'm taking my time. I'm not in a hurry to do so. Uh, again, it will be uh, like a based, uh, the narrative will be in Kashmir. It will be about uh, people of Kashmir. It will be uh, for Kashmir and it will be about Kashmir. So I'm just, uh, uh, I'm yet to uh, de decide what should I write because when a writer writes, he does not decide anything. I'm not a disciplined writer. So I, uh, the plot is in my head. The story is in my head. I just need the direction and the proper words to just bring it in uh, front of audience. So I'm taking my time, but yes, it will be about my people and uh, my motherland. That's all I can say for now. And, and, and what does uh, Azra Mukti do? I mean, apart from having the copyright of two books, what does she do uh, for a good life? <laughs> Yeah, I told you that I'm working with Indian Institute of Management. I have joined as a state resource coordinator. So uh, we have this uh, MGNF program that is going on. We have It's a pan-India project and we have fellows all over uh, Jammu and Kashmir. So I'm coordinating that project uh, and uh, that's what I do nowadays. Uh, so I'm engaged with that project. One last thing I'd like to hear from you is that what will be your advice to, to the young writers who often uh, just, just try to actually do whatever the best they can, but uh, nobody is like Azra that she can cut through all this uh, with so much of comfort and with so much of class. What's the advice for the young writers? I mean, I'm not a writer. I don't want to be one. I do contribute to the research uh, stuff, but at least to the young writers. I mean, I come across people who have this endeavor that they can be good writers. They still have uh, to, a story to back them. They have a plot, they have everything. So what needs to be done uh, for them as a, as, a, as a small manual so that the things they have to keep in mind so to become at least writers in some sense? Right. Uh, what I uh, I recently uh, read a novel, a very interesting line I read in that, that uh, people should not take writing as a fun, they should take writing as a duty. So my biggest advice to people who want to write is do not write for yourself, write for the people you are targeting. So if uh, anybody is looking of, uh, to become a good writer or uh, they want to write, they, they want to write good stories, do not do it just for the sake that because I like writing on something, I like like writing quotes, I like writing novels, or I like writing poems. Don't do it for the sake of your liking. Like if you're blessed with any kind of talent, if you're blessed with any kind of creativity, you should consider it as a responsibility. Like you need to harness that. My message is that you just do not jump into publishing business. Do not do it for the sake of fame. Do not do it for the sake of name. Do it like you have this talent in you and you want to do something for people like you should not keep this thing in mind ki i will be famous or i will get a lot of appreciation no do it like because people are going to gain benefit out of it like i'll tell you when i was writing shattered dreams it's very close to my heart every line that i wrote i used to think will it benefit people what is the message that they are going to learn out of it like this was my thing that the uh, one thing that i was targeting is that people should uh, like really increase their vocabulary when they read this book so i had this target in my mind that is the message that i want to carry like don't write for yourself write for the people who uh, who believe in you write for the like earlier when azra used to write she used to write for herself but now when i write i write for my people i write for my readers who really believe in me and that's the message that i would like to give to all the readers budding or established ones at least you have to do me one favor uh, to courier me the books that you have written because i'm not going to spend since at sorry, least sorry i'm uh, not able to hear you your voice is not clear could you repeat that again am i audible am i audible yeah yeah now you are I'm telling you that uh, you have to courier me the two books that you have written because I'm not sure, going sure. to purchase purchase them. <laughs> the reason that I have invited you to the podcast with such a phenomenal conversation that I have with you. Sure. Uh, Azra, you, you, got came, it. you came to the <laughs> podcast. Thank you. And we wish you all the best for your uh, future endeavors. 
do come and join us again because people will be asking uh, to have you more on this podcast. It was really an honor and a privilege to have you and uh, with such a fantastic and splendid conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much. I I loved it uh, and uh, I I really enjoyed this podcast. It was a polished one. Thank you so much for having me and I'd love to uh, have conversation with you uh, in future as well. I learned a lot of things. I learned a lot of things from you and I'll continue to do that from other podcasts. I'm, at least I am satisfied enough that you are not one of the feminists who bulldoze all the conversation. Uh, no. Too much radical, at least. Uh, no, no, no. No one should do that. <laughs> thank you for being at least uh, conservative in, in some sense and flexible enough in some sense. A perfect blend for the young generation to follow. Uh, <laughs> right. Truly an inspiration. Uh, thank you. And this is all from, from the State of Affairs for this evening. Thank you. Thank you Azra, so much. Thanks. Thank you so much. Take uh, care. Thank you. Take care.